Here we'll examine how to be more effective with the technology available to you. We're going to talk about saving files, about software that's available to you, how to improve your time management by improving your typing skills, and details you need to be aware of with email. It's important to understand details about saving files because if you don't effectively do it, you won't be able to retrieve it for submission for homework, for example. So knowing how to name them, how to store them, where to back them up, what your plan B might be is very important. You can save your files to a number of different locations and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the pros and cons for each. When you're talking about local drives, you're talking about storing it on the actual device itself. So it might be the hard drive, the C drive, the folder called My Documents, or your desktop. Now you may do that frequently and it's not necessarily a bad thing but if you don't have that device you can't access that file. It's also not very organized so it's very important that you recognize how to save those files with good names in good locations that make sense that are easy to find. Also, you have to be very careful if you're using a public computer because those folders and those files will not be accessible anywhere else. Also, many locations like the library, the ASC, and the Writing Center wipe their computers clean every night so outside files, for example, student files that got saved there, will get deleted because it's not something they want to worry about with viruses or clogging up their hard drive. So you can't go back the next day and say, hey, I saved this on this computer. I need to pick it up again. It most likely will be gone. If you can, get yourself a flash, thumb, or USB drive, whatever terminology you like. What's nice about them is that they're portable. They're easy to use. You can use them from your home to then a school computer to even a classroom if you have to do a presentation for example. So it's very important to use them even if you use it only as a backup device to maybe your C drive, my documents, or your desktop. So let's think about your flash drive. Did you realize that you can name it? If you don't have it already named, you should name it because if you forget it somewhere, it will make it much more easily recognizable to give back to you. Also, when you actually plug it into your device, it will be much more recognizable in the list of options. So, again, if you can make use of that flash drive and name it, it makes it easier for you to use. Remember, even if you have a flash drive, you need a plan B just in case something gets lost or corrupted, so back your work up. One thing that's nice about Office 365, which is free to all DSC students, is that if you're using Word, for example, on Office 365, it automatically saves to your OneDrive, which is a cloud, which we will talk about in just a moment. So if you don't know how to name your flash drive, this gives you the instructions. You want to make it short and simple. Most of them have a character length. But again, if you can put your name on it, if you do leave it at the ASC, for example, many students might have similar looking flash drives. It makes it a little easier to identify as yours. Even if you have your name written on it or you have a sticker put on it or something, this again helps it to become more identifiable as yours. Here's a trick that I learned years ago that not a lot of students are aware of. When you're using some of the most common software packages out there like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, you have an option called autosave. And what's nice is it will automatically save the document that you're working on based on settings that you've put forward. So as you can see the screen there, it shows auto recover. This one shows 10 minutes. 
I personally like it to be a little bit faster, so I say five minutes, but this helps you save the work that you're putting all of that effort into from a mishap, like maybe your computer dies because of the battery, or maybe there was a power surge because of a thunderstorm. That way, if that document closes for whatever reason, when you open that software package up again, it says, this is the last document you were working on. Do you want to open it up again? And it will bring up the version of that document that you were working on last when it recovered it. So go in and make these settings. It could really save you a lot of hassle. Now, if you use Office 365, again, as I mentioned, it will automatically save directly to your cloud, your OneDrive, but this is an option if you're using installed software. I keep mentioning the cloud and OneDrive, so let's talk about that. You might be familiar with a cloud called Google Docs, where you can save documents outside and even share if you're working in a group with people. The college offers a free software package and cloud drive to all students called OneDrive and Office 365. And basically, it's Microsoft Office for free. And as you're working on those documents, it automatically uploads them free to your cloud or OneDrive. So it's worth investigating and learning more about so that you can avoid losing those files again. And it is already free to you as a student. Some of the issues with clouds is that if you see what I list at the top there with Google Docs, Dropbox, etc., formatting can get really messed up with some of those other versions. What do I mean by getting messed up? Let's say you have to do a chart or a worksheet for one of your assignments. The tables and the charts can get very unreadable because it shifts the margins, it changes the fonts and the spacing because it's not reading it in the standard format that it was provided in. So the way that you can avoid those compat compatibility or readability issues is by using the free software that's provided to you, Office 365 and using your cloud. Even if you don't use Office 365, you are able as a student to download Microsoft Office for up to five devices. So again, even if you don't want to use the cloud, use Microsoft Office and you can even use the Microsoft Office version for Macs. The reason that I share this is even our learning management system, Falcon Online, does not read a lot of file types. So if you're using one of those others that I mentioned at the top, Google Docs, Dropbox, a Mac, Open Office, whatever it might be, you might be submitting homework that your teacher can't open or read. If that's the case, you're going to get a zero on that assignment. You can avoid all of that frustration and problem by either downloading Microsoft Office for free or using Office 365. If you choose not to use those free options that the college gives you, you are responsible for testing your documents, making sure they're in readable and compatible formats, and knowing if they're going to work in the learning management system Falcon Online. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about typing and time management. You might not really think about why do I need typing and as a college student? Well, you're going to be using it for emails, you're going to be using it for discussions, you're going to be using it for homework assignments like essays. So the faster that you can type and the more accurately you can type, the more time you can spend on the actual content and substance of the work that you're doing. So it's really to your benefit to get out of that whole hunt and peck method where you're just kind of poking at a keyboard or getting out of the habit that you're used to with texting with your thumbs because that's not how you're going to use a standard keyboard to type for homework assignments.
basically you're looking at a keyboard with standard keyboard hand positioning and there's ways to learn this you don't need a keyboarding class you don't need to take a formal typing class you can actually improve just by doing some work online but you want to be familiar with this first so you can practice improving your typing one of the first things you can do is again if you're not familiar with that hand positioning you can use this site and it helps you understand your practice and your positioning and your speed and your accuracy so it gets you accustomed to it next you will be able to start playing some games once you've gotten used to the hand positioning and it just improves your skill your accuracy and your timing then you can also do other games where it might be races where you can play around even with other students that might be using that software at the same time finally you can do individual uh, work and practice with another site that helps you with the basic typing skills again why am I telling you all of this even if you're a decent typer you can always improve your speed and accuracy and just by doing this 10 minutes a week 20 minutes a week you can improve your skills dramatically which saves you time in the long run you can spend a lot more time getting better grades on the content and substance of your worksheets and assignments rather than spending hours just typing them finally I want to talk to you a little bit about email and why we issue you a Falcon Mail account we are held responsible for something called FERPA which is the Family Educational Rights to Privacy Act and basically what that's doing is giving you some protection to your personal records and accounts so if you're talking with financial aid or advising or an instructor about anything related to your student record that could be grades your account information your transcripts anything about your personal situation that has to do with a record we are not allowed to respond to you unless you are requesting that information through a Falcon Mail email. You cannot send us an email from Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, whatever it may be, and get a response from us. We may respond to you by saying, I've sent a response to your Falcon Mail, but we can't directly talk to that email from an outside source due to those federal privacy regulations so if you ever have any questions about your accounts your grades anything like that please make sure you use your falcon mail because that's the only way that we're allowed to respond your falcon mail requires that you log into your account to access that email google and gmail and roadrunner and aol and whatever else might be out there does not require that so anybody can access it that means anybody can read the responses when you do send an email just a few rules of thumb to save you a lot of frustration always put something in the subject line it should be as specific as possible so the person knows how to respond to you in your message always try to address the five W's who what where when and why don't just ask I have a question about last night's homework last night's homework doesn't mean anything to an instructor they might be teaching multiple classes you might have had multiple assignments the more specific and detailed you can get in that email the faster you will get a response to assist you if you're going back and forth having a conversation with someone in emails always hit reply so it includes the previous conversation so you can see a whole follow through with that you also want to make sure that you're using proper language not text speak and think about your tone and expression in an email if you need more help on any of the things we've talked about make sure you visit the academic support center or their website and attend one of their workshops either gear up or tech up and get the information that you need to be the most successful student possible here's the contacts for the ASC for their workshops and anything else you might need